Networks are a fundamental part of the world and they are very diverse. They might be transport networks, stations connected by rail lines or towns connected by roads. Perhaps power networks, the national grid, power stations, substations and power lines. Or even social networks, personal and professional network of relationships, friends and colleagues. The simplest way to represent the network is to think of it as a set of nodes. Nodes representing things, so train stations, power stations, people, etc. Those nodes are connected by edges. Edges simply represent associations or connections. So they are the rail lines between the stations, the relationships between the people, and so on. Basic questions can be asked of these very diverse networks. What do they have in common? Are they the same shape? Do they change and grow in the same way? And by answering those questions, insights about real-world situations that those networks describe can be derived. Scientists and mathematicians used to think mainly about two different types of networks, regular and random. Regular networks are very uniform in structure. All the nodes have two, three or four links only to their immediate neighbors. And random networks have a very chaotic structure. So nodes have a very different number of connections and each node has links to a wide variety of other nodes right across the network. The assumption that people used to make was that networks in the real world looked a lot like the random network. In 1997, Duncan Watts looked in detail at a number of well-defined networks to find out whether they shared this small world property. He looked at the neural network of worms, he looked at the US power network, he looked at the network of Hollywood actors, where he said that two Hollywood actors were connected if they start in the same film. Those are really diverse networks, but what's showed that they all have the same small world property, the same six degrees of separation. But why? What is it that gives these networks this small world property? And why is it that these real world networks all have this? A few years after Watts had done his work, Lazaro Barat Bessi realized that the web offered a real opportunity to explore this question. And that's because the pages and links on the web are able to be analyzed by machine. So he created scripts that would crawl a subset of web pages and map out the structure. And he would be able to find whether the web had this same property and potentially explore why this was the case. 
but I'm guessing was expecting to see a normal distribution of links. Some pages would have very many links and some would have very few, but most would have near the average number. But what he saw was a picture that was very different. What he found was a parallel distribution of links where the great majority of pages had very few links, but some, he called these hubs, have many. But I basically described this structure as scale-free network because it maintains this property whatever scale you look at it. So a scale-free network is one that is defined as saying the connections follow this power law and is dominated by a small number of powerful hubs and crucially for our understanding of real-world networks because hubs have connections that range widely across the network it means that scale-free networks show this small world property so we are kind of able to say that real-world networks are small worlds because they are scale-free of course this doesn't really answer the question because the question just changes what makes them scale-free in the first place? So luckily the answer is quite simple. It's a principle known as preferential attachment, perhaps summed up by the phrase the rich get richer. So in many real-world networks, the more edges a node already has, the more connections then, the more likely to attract new edges.